Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. I'm Chris Rycroft, and in this video we're going to continue Unit 5 of the course on eigenvalue problems. We're going to introduce a number of the basic definitions that we'll make use of in this unit, such as the characteristic polynomial, algebraic and geometric multiplicity of eigenvalues, and we'll also look at how we can create a companion matrix for any given polynomial. These definitions will be very useful when, in later videos, we start looking at numerical methods for computing eigenvalues. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors of real-valued matrices can be complex, and therefore in this unit we'll generally work with complex-valued matrices and vectors. So suppose that A is a complex n by n matrix. Then we'll consider the eigenvalue problem where we search for pairs of an eigenvalue lambda and corresponding eigenvector v such that a times v is equal to lambda times v. And in this equation we can see that we can scale v by an arbitrary constant and we'll therefore use that freedom to enforce that the Euclidean norm of v is equal to 1. And here, because v is a complex valued vector, we define the Euclidean norm by taking the sum of squares of the moduli of the components of v and then taking everything to the square root. So if we look at the equation a times v is equal to lambda times v, then we can move the lambda v over to the left hand side and that would allow us to reformulate the equation as a minus lambda i all multiplied by v is equal to zero. And we know this system will have a solution if and only if a minus lambda i is singular. And therefore we must have that the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to zero. So that motivates that we introduce a polynomial p of z which is equal to the determinant of a minus z times i. And this will be a degree n polynomial. And we refer to this as the characteristic polynomial of A. And this is a very useful definition because we know that the eigenvalues of A exactly correspond to the roots of the characteristic polynomial. So by the fundamental theorem of algebra, we know that we can factorize P of Z as equal to Cn times Z minus lambda 1 times z minus lambda 2 up to z minus lambda n. And here the lambda i are all of the different eigenvalues and cn is an arbitrary constant. So we also know that if we have complex eigenvalues of a real matrix A, then they must occur in complex conjugate pairs. So specifically, if we have a eigenvalue lambda that can be written in component form as alpha plus i times beta, then we know that it's complex conjugate that we write as lambda bar, which is equal to alpha minus i times beta, is also going to be an eigenvalue of our matrix. This follows from the fact that if A is a real matrix, then the characteristic polynomial P of A must have real coefficients. And in this case, we know that p of the conjugate of z must be equal to the conjugate of p of z for any complex z. And to see this, let's expand p in component form. So we can write that p of the conjugate of z is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to n of ck times the conjugate of z to the k, where here the ck are the coefficients of the polynomial. And that will be equal to the sum from k equals 0 to n of ck times z to the k all conjugated. And since those coefficients ck are real, we can pull the conjugate outside the entire sum. And we see that therefore this is equal to the conjugate of p of z. So suppose now that w is a complex root of p then we can conclude that the conjugate of w is also a root of p.
since we know that zero is equal to p of w, and that will be equal to the conjugate of p of w, and that will be equal to p of the conjugate of w. And therefore we can conclude that the conjugate of w is also root of p. We have seen that every matrix has an associated characteristic polynomial. And similarly, every polynomial has an associated companion matrix. And the companion matrix Cn of an nth degree polynomial p is a matrix that has the eigenvalues that match the roots of p. So suppose that we have a polynomial p, then we can divide it by its leading coefficient to get a monic polynomial. So in that case then, the leading coefficient will be equal to 1. And this won't change the roots of the polynomial. So in this case, we would have a polynomial p monic of z that will be equal to c0 plus c1z plus c2z squared up to cn minus 1, z to the n minus 1, plus z to the n. Then p monic will be the characteristic polynomial of the n by n companion matrix shown here, where we have zeros, but then ones in the subdiagonal, and then negative polynomial coefficients in the final column. So let's look at this now for the case of n equal 3. So in this case then, our third degree monic polynomial would in general have the form c0 plus c1z plus c2z squared plus c cubed. And in this case then, our companion matrix c3 would have the form 0, 0, minus c0, 1, 0, minus c1, 0, 1, minus c2. And for 3 by 3 matrix, we can explicitly write down a formula for the determinant of that matrix. And it will have six terms, each of which is a product of three of the entries in the matrix. Using this formula, we can show that the determinant of zi minus our companion matrix is equal to c0 plus c1z plus c2z squared plus c cubed, which exactly matches our monic polynomial. And this shows us that there's an interesting link here between matrices and polynomials. And this link is actually used by Python's roots function for finding the roots of a polynomial. And the way this function works is to use algorithms that we're going to consider in this unit by finding the eigenvalues of the associated companion matrix. Let lambda be an eigenvalue of a complex n by n matrix A. Then we say that the set of all eigenvalues of A is equal to the spectrum of A. And for a specific lambda, we can define the algebraic multiplicity of lambda to be the multiplicity of the corresponding root of the characteristic polynomial. We can also define the geometric multiplicity of lambda to be the number of linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to lambda. And as an example, let's suppose that A is equal to the identity matrix. Then in this case, lambda equal 1 is an eigenvalue with both algebraic and geometric multiplicity equal to n. And to see this, let's first look at the characteristic polynomial of A. And in this case, we'll have that it's equal to p of z, which is equal to z minus 1 to the n. And therefore, 1 will be a root with multiplicity n, and will have algebraic multiplicity of n. In addition, we can also see that the unit vectors e1, e2, up to en, are all linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equal 1 and therefore the geometric multiplicity of 1 must also be equal to n. So there's a useful theorem that tells us that the geometric multiplicity of an eigenvalue is less than or equal to its algebraic multiplicity. And if an eigenvalue lambda has geometric multiplicity less than its algebraic multiplicity, then we say that lambda is defective. And 
From this, we say that a matrix is defective if it has at least one defective eigenvalue. And let's now look at a small example of a defective matrix and we'll see how Python's eigenvalue routine handles this case. Let's now take a look at how Python handles computing eigenvectors and eigenvalues for defective matrices. And to illustrate this, I'm going to make use of a 3 by 3 matrix A that has 2s on the diagonal and then 1s above the diagonal. And we can verify that this matrix has an eigenvalue of lambda equal 2. If we calculate the characteristic polynomial of this matrix, then we find that it's equal to z minus 2 cubed. And that tells us that the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue is 3. And if we search for eigenvectors, so we solve a times v is equal to lambda v, then we find that v is equal to e1, the unit vector in the first coordinate, is the only permissible solution up to normalization. And that therefore tells us that the geometric multiplicity is equal to 1. And since the geometric multiplicity is strictly less than the algebraic multiplicity, it therefore tells us that A is a defective matrix. So let's now go ahead and compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in Python. So we'll first import NumPy and we'll then specify this matrix. And we'll then go ahead and compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors using the numpy.linalge.eig function. And if we compute the eigenvalues, then we see that we have two repeated three times, and that matches our algebraic multiplicity calculation. If we look at the eigenvectors, then we find that we have three eigenvectors that are all linearly dependent up to rounding error. So in the first column, we have 1, 0, 0. In the second column, we have minus 1, 0, 0, other than a small rounding error term around 10 to the minus 16. And similarly, for the final column, we have 1, 0, 0, other than some small rounding error. So this is what we should expect then in this case where we have defected matrices. We're just going to get back linearly dependent eigenvectors. One thing to note is that defected matrices are a singular limit of matrices and small perturbations will take us away from this behavior. So let's now look at modifying our matrix by including a small 0.1 perturbation into one of the entries. So in this case now, our matrix has a 0.1 below the diagonal in one of the entries. So let's now compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors again. So this small change here is enough to perturb our eigenvalues. And now we have three distinct eigenvalues. And once we have distinct eigenvalues, then we can no longer have this defective behavior. The algebraic multiplicity and the geometric multiplicity must both be equal to one in this case. And if we look at the eigenvectors, then we find that for this case, we have three linearly independent vectors. Let A be a complex n by n non-defective matrix. Then in that case, it has a full set of linearly independent eigenvectors, v1, v2, up to vn, that are potentially complex valued. Now, let's introduce a matrix V, that's n by n, that contains the eigenvectors of A in its columns. And let's suppose that then D is the diagonal matrix with the corresponding eigenvalues down the diagonal. Then the statement that A times VI is equal to lambda I times VI 
is equivalent to saying that A times the matrix V is equal to the matrix V multiplied by D. And since we assumed that v A is non-defective, then we can invert V to obtain A is equal to V times D times V inverse. And we refer to this as the eigen decomposition of A. And this shows us that for a non-defective matrix, A is going to be diagonalized by V. Suppose that A is a complex n by n matrix. Then we can introduce its conjugate transpose, A star, that is a complex n by m matrix. And the ijth component of A star is defined to be the conjugate of the jth component of A. And we say that a matrix is Hermitian if A is equal to A star, and this generalizes the concept of matrix symmetry. So suppose that A is real, then saying that a matrix is Hermitian is equivalent to saying that it's symmetric. We say that a matrix is unitary if A multiplied by A star is equal to the identity, and this generalizes the concept of an orthogonal matrix. And if A is real, then we see that the unitary property exactly corresponds to orthogonality. Previously, we talked about defining the Euclidean norm for a complex valued vector V, and using the conjugate transpose definition, we see that the Euclidean norm of a complex vector V can be written as the square root of V star times V. In Python, the dot t operator can be used to perform the transpose, and the dot get h operator can be used to perform the conjugate transpose. And here I'm just showing a few small examples of using these two functions on two by two complex matrices. In some cases, the eigenvectors of A can be chosen such that they are orthonormal. And in this case, we would have then that vi star times vj will be equal to 1 if i is equal to j, and 0 if i is not equal to j. And in this case, the matrix of eigenvectors q is unitary, and therefore a can be unitarily diagonalized. So we cannot write down that a is equal to q times d times q star, where D is our diagonal matrix, where we have the eigenvalues down the diagonal. There's a useful theorem that tells us that a Hermitian matrix is unitarily diagonalizable, and its eigenvalues will be real. And this generalizes a useful result in real linear algebra that tells us that a symmetric matrix is orthogonally diagonalizable. But here we can extend to the complex case. However, Hermitian matrices are not the only matrices that can be unitarily diagonalized. And we say that a complex matrix A is normal if the conjugate transpose of A multiplied by A is equal to A times its conjugate transpose. And we see that all Hermitian matrices will satisfy this definition because A is equal to A star. And we have a useful theorem then that tells us that a matrix is unitarily diagonalizable if and only if it is normal.